What's going on boys and girls? Welcome to day number two of our pronoun unit. As usual, we are gonna start with a warm up. Notice, it is only two questions, but we are gonna do multiple things with these two questions. So first of all, what you're gonna do, and you're gonna pause to do this, you're first going to look at one and two and tell me all the pronouns that you see. Remember, a pronoun is a word that takes the place of a noun. Instead of saying, Spider-Man is so cool. I think Spider-Man has the coolest powers. You know, Spider-Man has his own movie. I can replace that with him. I can replace that with he. And if Spider-Man were like an animal, I could even use it. But Spider-Man, hence the man, is not an animal. He is a man. So look for those. Take that minute and pause, and I'll come back, and I'm going to show you the pronouns in all these sentences. Welcome back. Let's look for those pronouns. So first one reads, they awarded her the prize. I like to use the trick of any time you can replace a word with a name or person or object, but it's shortened, that's a pronoun. They, that's your first pronoun. That could be referring to a group of people. Then you have awarded her the prize. Do you see where a name could be inserted instead of a certain word? Her, her could be Lucy, Sally, Jessica, who knows? But that is how you know. They replace that name with her to make the sentence shorter. Now, let's look at number two. We drove them to the airport. Do we see any words that might could be replaced with something more specific? <gasps> we, because we refers to a group of people, but you don't know which. Short version, we. We drove them to the airport. Still looking for words that could be replaced. Okay, them, again, they could be referring to like, we drove our family or drove their family. Who knows, but they wanted to shorten it and just say, them. So our pronouns here are they and her, number one, and then we and them, and number two. Now, here's step two. We talked about two different kinds of pronouns, subject pronouns and object pronouns. Subject pronouns usually come at the beginning of the sentence. Object pronouns are going to be on the receiving end of a verb and also can mainly be found in the middle. So, what is they, what are they and we as far as object versus subject pronouns? Boys and girls, they and we, are they subject pronouns or object pronouns? They're subject, and I'll tell you why. Each of these sentences, these are their subjects. They awarded her the prize. They is the subject. We drove them to the airport. We is the subject. So, S, P for subject pronoun. Next, we have her and them. Well, we kind of knocked this out, but I'm gonna talk to you why, I'm gonna talk to you about why this is an object pronoun. They awarded, who was awarded? Her, we drove, who, who did we drive? We drove them, they're the object pronoun. So I'm gonna put O, P. And please remember, SP stands for subject pronoun. OP stands for object pronoun. So that's your warm up, pretty straightforward. Please remember that, that pronouns are words that you can use to replace more specific words. They could be referring to me and my family. But in this case, they just wanna use they. Her could be referring to someone specific like Lucy or Jessica. But in this case, they wanted to use her. That's our warm up. Let's get back to the PowerPoint. Awesome. All right, pronouns and antecedents are today's topic. Ooh, antecedents are a little tricky. They've always got my last classes pretty confused, but I'm gonna make this as clear as possible. So let's read the following sentences. And in these sentences, the names that you see are the names of Greek gods. So they might be a little weird to you. And they're also the names of Greek, just people and myths. So if the names look a little weird, don't worry. We're still going to learn here. Arachne, I'm right here, Arachne competes with Athena. She weaves skillfully. Now, the whole point of learning antecedents, what is she? Is she referring to Arachne or Athena? That's where pronouns can sort of get us into trouble if we're not careful when we use them. So, it's not clear. We don't know if she's referring to Athena or Arachne, but let's look at the sentence rewritten. Arachne competes with Athena. Athena weaves skillfully. There you want to use Athena because you have two she's, two girls. If you just use she after, you're not going to know who you're referring to. You're not going to know, well, wait a minute, she weaves skillfully. Are you talking about Arachne or are you talking about Athena? 
you gotta be careful when using pronouns, boys and girls. If it just said arachne, if it just said something like arachne was famous because she turned into a spider, you can use she there because you only have arachne, but these two, you have to be more clear. So that's just a little example of how pronouns can sometimes get you in trouble. But look at this. A noun or a group of words that the pronoun refers to, that is the antecedent. So, they have several books about Greek myths at the library. What is they referring to? That is your antecedent. They, in this case, are several books about myths are available at the library. They refers to the people that own the library, the people that are running the library. The antecedent of a pronoun is what the pronoun is referring to. So, he is a cool superhero. Spider-Man is my antecedent. That's who I'm referring to. Spider-Man is so cool. He is a great superhero. Again, he. Who is he referring to? Well, in this case, it's Spider-Man. Daredevil. I'll do another one. Another one. Do another one. Daredevil is my favorite superhero. He cannot see. Who is he referring to? Daredevil. Daredevil is your antecedent. Those are antecedents. They're essentially what the pronoun is calling out to, or what is what it's referring to. So make sure that when you're writing, and the reason we want to learn antecedents is we want to make sure that when you are writing, the antecedent is clear. If you have a situation like last time where it was Arachne and Athena and you still use she, you don't know what she I'm talking about. So you wouldn't want to use the real name there. All right, so you also want to make sure that when you're using these that your pronouns agree with gender. What I mean by gender is he, she, and you'll see that when you're writing, it can be really easy to mix those up. So let's see how this looks when it's done kind of weirdly. The myth of Arachne is amusing. I enjoyed it. You see there, it is referring to myth. What is he enjoying? The myth. That works. That's an okay time to use a pronoun like it. But then the bystanders see Athena. They watch her at the loom. That is a little more tricky, but you can still follow what it's saying. They refers to the bystanders. That they has the antecedent bystanders. Her refers to Athena. So the antecedent of her is Athena. Those are two examples where it works, but boys and girls, do you think that to be even more clear, we could replace this again with bystanders and this with Athena? It doesn't always matter, but a lot of times if you're not sure about if, whether or not what you're writing is clear or not clear, Using pronouns is a time you want to be real careful because using the entire word, sometimes that's the more clear way to write. So, and again, these names I know are a little weird. They come from Greek myths. So that's why the names are a little wacky. So that's going to conclude today's antecedent lesson. That was day two. You're going to find an assignment on Google Forms from Schoology that will have you essentially go through and identify pronouns but then also find their antecedent. And most of the sentences are gonna have something set up like Spider-Man can swing through, or can swing with his webs. He is really cool. And then you're gonna be asked, who is he referring to? And that's what you'll have to do. Boys and girls, hope you guys are having a great day. You guys are working hard, I know. Super proud of you. This has been Mr. Dooley, and I will see you guys in the next video.